Hey, I'm E, you got legend, this ain't thing goes. Podcast, and like we normally say, this podcast can be very controversial. It has our own life experiences, our own opinions, it is what it is. If you're an entrepreneur, aspiring artist, or have a story to share and doing things in the community, this is where you need to come. Hit us up on Instagram, and I'm pretty sure we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So E, what we got today? We got a very special guest. Some might call him a legend. He no, no, very no, well no. known. Just right. If you stranded, <laughs> he might pick you up. <laughs> you introduce yourself, bro. What's good? My name is Squirrel Wide Hooligan Express. Matter of fact, you need to go tap that app. Hooligan Express Radio is what's running it right now. <laughs> oh. Yep, that's about it. That's, that's about it. Or not, you know, Hooligan movies. Express Radio. You can go to any app store and, t- and tap the app. It's free. And that's where it's really at. So no excuse, because that's where he's at. That's where, that's that's where, where I'm at. That's where you can and find it. And it's free. Yeah. And it's free. Yeah, because you know, we always want something free. I'm just saying. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> All right. So let's break this down for you being a legend. Like, how did you even get into radio? Like, how did you? I don't even know where that legend thing came from. What? You know what? That's just Everybody sound like. Knows you. That just sound like old. That's what legend no, sounds like. No, it's, it's a lot for you to learn. You're wise, you know? Um. I've been mixing all my life. My dad's a DJ, so I've been like mixing in a DJ like forever. But radio, how I kind of like got in the game. Um, radio One has an AM station, WOLB 1010 AM. Okay. I used to be a board operator. Three, two, one, you're up. I did that for 10 years. So people out there, it takes a while. Put his work in. It takes a while. So. I was you just, wonder why you call you a legend. Okay, yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah, so I was doing like all the old politician shows, Larry Young, Miss Hughes, Dick Gregory, all these old people. Not not old, but they all had like uh, radio shows, talk shows, and I was the board operator. But at the same time, I was DJing at all the strip clubs. I was the strip club DJ. I think I might have been the one invented to get them ones out. I was at Colossals. I was at 900. Yeah, I said it might be before your time, but yeah. <laughs> Man, you I couldn't even use real money back then. Money. You couldn't <laughs> even use real money. Well, back then at, at Colossus, they couldn't use money. So once you gave like $10, they would give you like paper money. Damn near like Monopoly money to throw at the girls. So yeah, that's that happened been a to me in Mexico. Yeah, so I was in a strip club. So boom, I'm at the radio station just working my, my board. And I would see Reggie, Raj, Frank, Ski, and all them in the building. And Reg was like, I know you from somewhere, not just in the building. I was like, yep, I'm the DJ at all the strip clubs. So he was like, hey, yeah. So, make a long story short, Reg ain't never come to work. Reggie Reg was out being Reggie Reg in the street, so he was always late for the 9 o'clock mix. So him and Conan used to do the night show at that time. So one time, he was like, Conan came and was like, Reg, late as usual. Squirrel, you got your records because you can already go to the strip club later after you get out of OLB. You want to mix tonight? And I was nervous. I was like, yup. <laughs> and that's the start of Squirrel Wide. Sure. I was shaking the whole Conan, if you ever see Conan, he would tell you the story. My hands were shaking the whole time. That was his fault, though. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you ain't mixing in a strip club. You got 100,000 people listening to you. That's the <laughs> big league. So I'm like, hey, you don't want to tell a nigga that. Right, right. Shook the whole time, but I killed it. From that, they just started like, squirrel, come on in, squirrel, come on in, squirrel, come on in. Next thing you know, I was doing the holiday, man. We used to have the mix fix weekends back in the day at 92Q. Mix on the holidays, and it just all went from there. I'm just like, I'm lost for words. Like, you said you were shaking. So do you remember the first track you put down before you started the mix? Well, you got to think back then, club music was running Baltimore. Mm-hmm. Hip-hop was this much, this much. So it was probably some club track, yo, yo, where the hoes at? <laughs> um, <laughs> Watch out for the big Watch out, yeah, that, that, that was kind of before then. <laughs> this is back, yeah. I'm, I'm that old, yeah. Like when club was really just Frank Ski, Doo Doo Brown, stuff like that. So mm. I was mixing that stuff, and club was really running Baltimore at that time. So it went from that to slowly but surely getting into the hip hop game, and this is way before Swift, way before Pork Chop. Damn. Yeah, this was back in the Reggie Reg Frank Ski era. So would you like to tell us how old you are? I'm 49. Oh, okay. And how March 5th, I turned 49. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, Pisces. March 9th, man. Uh, Pisces game. Uh, Pisces, Pisces game. That's why you're super cool. I knew it was something. You don't even believe in that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't believe in signs. Uh, no, it's cool, but for the stones, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
Yo, I cannot. So, um, how old were you when you were introduced to it? A baby. Because, you know, like I said, my dad was a DJ, so I've been mixing all my life. But, like, I think I started the radio. I've been there 25 years, something yeah. like that. Mm. Like I said, I did 10 running the board, just doing nothing at the AM station. So, all together, it was like 24 years at Radio 1. So, you had vinyl records? Oh, yes, definitely. So, what was your first vinyl record? Yeah, like, crazy. you got into your hand and you was like, I'm about to mix this up. What was that? Like, you like, skirt. You know how they were I'm confront. You know what it was? Eric B is Eric B is president. That old, the bridge, MC Shane. Oh, about to say same. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's some old school. But you know what? The bridge is open. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Karis won all that. that so was what did you mix it with? I don't even remember. It was yeah, it was that long ago. But you know, we used to steal records. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I used to go to Metro Stereo. Um, Bernie shop. Where was Bernie shop? He had one in Mondawm and one downtown. And I was the master of like, I would buy one, but I could put like three or four in the. Oh, the juice joint. You know, see more juice. That's what he did. Yeah, yeah, but I mastered that. I mastered that. So I got caught one time. You had them in the newspaper too. No, I didn't oh, do the newspaper. Right, right. I found a way that I, I could put like three or four in one album oh, sleeve, so they wouldn't even. So you taking them out. Yeah, but I was nice with it. But kids don't steal. <laughs> you gotta put a PSA. Kids don't, steal. don't kill. Yeah, don't kill, don't, don't steal. steal. Yeah. But steal before you kill. If don't. You, the, if you yeah, got to, you know what I'm saying? No, right. anyway, so the vinyl, <laughs> you mixed it, you said your dad was a DJ. So mm -hmm. when you finally went to your father, was like, look, I know I can do this. What did he say? Hell no. <laughs> Why would he say that? Man, what's the thing? Because I, I know. <laughs> you would think, like, right, you would think, like, bring me in, teach me the game. No. He was I, was, I actually was pretty good in basketball. So he parlayed me a scholarship at uh, Virginia Wesleyan to play basketball. Okay, can you explain parlay? Oh, um, he hooked it up. Okay, all right. In layman's terms, he hooked it up. Yeah. He hooked it up for me to go to college and get a scholarship to play basketball, but I turned it down. So after that, he stopped fucking with me. <laughs> I ain't mad at him. Because niggas but, don't get parlayed to college. But, like, what you mean? As much as Did you I think like, he wasn't that nice? No, I was nice. I was getting busy with it. Ain't but, nobody gonna say they were sorry, but go ahead. But, just like another thing, he was a bad salesman. He told me like, if you're gonna take this basketball seriously, no summers, no girls, no, you know, oh. like he started hitting it like, you're gonna be in the gym in the morning, you're gonna be running. I was like, what? Man, I ain't trying to do that. I'm going to Morgan to be a dummy and get some butt. And he wants you to be gang with everybody, everybody in Morgan. I went to Morgan, all my friends was at Morgan, all the girls. I'm not going, no, no summer. I gotta be running track, man. You weren't gonna be Zeke. No. So, yeah, that ended up not happening. So, after that, I guess he was mad at me for about like 25 years. <laughs> 25 years. <laughs> Until I was officially signing my contract at Radio 1 at Squirrel Wide on 90Q, then he was like, that's my boy. That's my boy. Yeah, we're back. Now, I'm picking people up now, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how do you like what Radio is now? Terrible. Alright, well, let's, before we get the way it is now, <laughs> let's get the, the payola. Payola is alive and well. It's still alive? Oh, yeah, definitely. You love it, don't you? No, because I ain't getting it. You ain't getting it? No. Why not? Not yet, anyway. Oh, you know, right. we're just starting to, you know. No, I ain't gonna. No, Payola's <laughs> bad. Don't do Payola. But the higher ups are getting it. That's why you hear the, bro. That's why you hear the same no, five songs. Do that. You hear the same five songs every day. I it. Even when you got the lower mixes, people just want they shit hear it and play it on radio. Let me, you let me tell you something slick about that. Go a lot. There's this thing called a playlist. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't playing what's on that list, you're getting suspended. And you're getting fired. You're getting in trouble. So there is a playlist. I thought but the playlist was only during certain times, like peak hours. Oh, Late on at night, you oh, can play what no. you want. Oh, no. That is a bad misunderstanding. Teach us. <laughs> Teach us. We here to learn. Well, back in the days, you could get paid to play. Mm -hmm. So, if you was hearing a whole bunch of one artist or whatever, yeah, they was probably getting paid for it, for the spins. You know, spins count. You get paid, you know, from the labels. So, the program directors and the higher-ups started getting wise to that. So, they was like, wait a minute, how are these DJs walking around with benzes and trucks and getting all this money? The hate. We going to get the money. We're the programmers. So, they invented this thing called the mix list. Mm -hmm. They'll give you 12 songs. And if you ain't mixing them 12 songs, you're getting in trouble. You're getting suspended. You're getting fired. 
And them 12 songs is made by the programmer. So the programmer started getting in bed with the label execs and all that and getting the money. Okay. So Payo Levin never died. It just it got out the DJ's hands and it went into the programmer's hands. That's why you hear the same five songs. That's why they kind of lost the... His voice slipped, man. <laughs> that's kind of why they lost the, the, like the streets. That's kind of why they lost the, the connectivity to, to the, the hoods. And, and, and that's around the country. That's not just here. That's around the country because... I get the programmers. You giving me money to play the songs, I don't care who it is. I don't care how good it is. I don't care if the artists, because you know the locals ain't really got but no money. Still, so you were still <clears throat> doing these strip clubs, mm -hmm. pride parties. Mm -hmm. People still want to hear their songs like that. Oh yeah, you get money in the street. Yeah. yeah. But the big money is really in radio though. Mm -hmm. Them labels is kicking out for you to play their songs. Yeah, that's a fact. Big dollars. And now it's super programmed. So the DJs ain't getting, but I found a way around it though. You didn't? Yeah, well, don't tell No, I, I mean, I'm out the game now. So <laughs> I, I can mix my ass off. So what they would do is, they would look at the spins, the BDS. They would look at the charts. All right, I'm getting paid for that. I'm getting paid for that. I'm getting paid for that. What is this song? Squirrel, at 645, you played a song that's not on the list. I used to get suspended all the time. But anyway, <laughs> found a way around it. I would mix acapellas over the beats. So, cause I can mix my ass off. So I started dropping acapellas over the instrumentals and that's how I was getting it in. When they look, it's they like look, they be like, I don't see nothing. Yeah. yeah, so there, there was ways around it. So yeah, that's how I made my claim to fame. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. That yeah. definitely Cause they would look at the charts and be like, huh, you only played four songs this hour? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I would just rock the acapella over an instrumental, get the, yeah, it's, it's, it was ways around it. So you say you have an art, you have a listening ear. Yes. For most people. So do you think that is good for these DJs now that's out here? Should they have it? Because sometimes I'm like, are they playing? What am I listening to? I think they lost the art for the likes. Mm -hmm. We used to want to DJ. We were for zero money. We would mix all day long. We loved to mix. We loved the DJ. We loved the music. Now they be like, that's what's going to get me the bitches. That's what's going to get me the likes. Mm -hmm. That's what's... That's DJing really ain't their thing, so to speak. You know what I mean? It's because I, it's hot. Cause you see, right after that, if you get phony, they sell clothes now, or they now everybody is content creators. <laughs> they traded in their controllers to be content creators. But see, back then, you had to go to the record store. Them songs, them records was nine ninety nine a piece. So you ain't just getting it in it just to be playing around. Now you can go online and download every song in the world. That's so right. so you can be hot for a minute and be like, uh, eh, this really ain't for me and, and keep it moving. No, nah, not as a DJ. You had to be in the stores. You had to see what Sean Marshall was playing at Odell's and all these spots and be like, I gotta go get that song. So you go to the store and get that song. That shit like $9.99. Imports was $19.99. So it wasn't no, I'm just gonna do it now because it's getting me the bitches. And then be like, all right, I'm on to something else. You'd be like, no, nah, this is, this is where I'm mentor. Now you can get anything online. You can get a whole catalog of music. If you don't like it, you can throw it away. Now everybody pick up an iPhone. Now they're content creators. Well, how do you think them camera people be feeling? The people that did camera work all their life and learn photography and all. Man, you can get an iPhone and now you them. You got to do it no more. That's yeah. so true. So you'll never be in a club or at a party and you hear a DJ and you don't go to him like, you know, yeah, I think you need to. No, because times is, times is, then I would sound like an old head. Then I would sound like well, my age. You're telling the truth, you know, giving game. Hey, they don't even dance anymore, so it don't matter. Yeah, that's true. They stand that's around true. with their phones. I miss those and, days. I mean, you might see a girl freaking a girl, but other than that, that's about it. <laughs> let a guy slide over there, up, like, sure, do you bad? Let me slide over there. They be like, whoa, you whoa, whoa, don't you be. I mean, look at you, you bent over with your girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Old days when your man had to hold you up. Hold you up, that. or you get the stains I'm on your jeans. You on your white shirt. Oh, on the wall, on oh, the Yeah, them days is over. Now they just stand around and, you know, everything is a photo op. So the DJ, that's why. You can be a promoter being more important than a DJ now. Mm. Because the DJ ain't, ain't, ain't doing nothing but playing the Back when we, who's the DJ? We don't care who, who DJ. That's what matters. Who gonna be rocking the party? Now they can be like, any old monkey can rock the party. <laughs> it's who's putting it on. 
That's because true. it's gonna be a whole bunch of people standing around and make sure we get the <laughs> selfies and the, <laughs> hey, we don't. Yeah, it's, times has changed. Can't even bend the picture over no more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you can. Yeah, you get over on the lawsuit. Right, right. Yeah, people, yo, he was why you been like that? Yeah. That is so true. So that what DJs true. you you do think still rocking parties these days? Big Al, Al. Jada, um, Duke be getting it in. Um, DJ Lou, that's my young boy. Um, OK, DJ OK, DJ Rowe. Like the young boys, they be, they be kind of, there's some of them that still take it as a craft, but there's also those out there that do it for a hundred bucks, long as they can, you know, take a picture like I'm the DJ and I can get me some ass off of it later on, you know, that matters to them, you know what I mean? <laughs> Is you mad these these niggas getting ass, bro? Oh, no, cause oh I was booking, nigga. I was booking back then. Yeah, so you you was using your skill to get ass. Cause DJs was the shit back then. So you had like four bitches at once. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, somebody might be listening. No comment. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, so you didn't DJ the party for the ass before. For free. Oh, for free, for food. If you feed me, I'll mix. Feed me, fuck me, and I'm a mix. <laughs> no, no comment once again. <laughs> but yeah, back then, for just for the just to mix in front of people meant something. So yeah, I was mixing for food, and yeah, I was mixing for we get you drunk. I, I just want to mix for real, for real. Right. You know, like. But well, that's how your name get out there that's too. Thirty something years later, <laughs> they call you a legend from it. Hey. It's true though, it's true though, it's true though. So where did you come up with like the idea to say this squirrel wild? Like everybody wanted to call that number at one time and wanted to well, just be like Come pick a, me up! Yeah, you know what? Cool. So I have a crazy story. Hooligan Express started as a credit card that I created. Like the American Express. Really? It was the Hooligan Express, can't hit the hood without it. Don't be stealing my shit. <laughs> can't hit the hood without it. So I would go to places back then, the clothing lines was Cashland, Samos, um, and the, like the, the local stores, and I had it where if you go, I went there myself and was like, yo, if somebody come and show you my card, can they get 10% off? And, and so that's where it originally started, the Hooligan Express was like the American Express. Mm. And how it morphed into a train and coming picking people <laughs> up, I kind of really don't know. Oh, <laughs> like, that was, I used to be pumped up, like, hold up! And here but I, I reinvented the shout out. Because the shout out started getting phony. People stopped calling the radio station. The, you know, I just want to give a shout out. So how can I recreate the shout out? I started picking people up on the Hooligan Express. And that shit went nuts. Yeah, that yeah. Shit went Man, nuts. I'm selling dope on Metro. Yo, come, <laughs> come pick me up. up. Man, we was putting up ridiculous numbers. Ridiculous numbers. And I got a shout out to my man Porkchop. Because he was the one that was That's having to listen to all, all those shit. people and chop it up and make it sound good while I was mixing. Ooh. So they would call him, he would record it, chop up all the cussing and all, you know, and, and, and then we would air it. And it was ridiculous. It became a phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. Still to this day. I can't go to this day. Come pick to me up. Day. It is. I, at one point, I thought you was picking niggas up. Yeah, yeah people really thought it was real. People really thought it was real. But that's, crazy. that's the importance of branding. And you know where I learned that from? K Swift. When nobody more important than branding than K Swift. I learned K Swift was doing all the stuff that I was doing with the Express. She was doing that back when it wasn't even cool. Like when it wasn't even social media, and it wasn't even like the thing to do. She was branding that club queen. She was branding, branding, branding. She used to come into work and didn't even care. And I was like, yo, we're on the radio. This is the night show. This is radio. She was like, man, whatever. Go ahead, you can, hey, 92Q, go ahead, square. You can take over the rest. <laughs> I was like, what? She was out getting her nails and her hair done because she was getting ready to go and kill a club later on that night. And that's when I started learning about, like, it's more about the brand. Like, we just sitting in, and she was uh, like, yo, this is just a building. I think Q was just a, mm -hmm. a building. What are you outside of that? And she was the right. club queen. She was, she the one that taught me about, oh, you got a brand, not that Squirrel Wise on 92Q. You need to brand something that can leave this building, that right. can be something outside of this building. For yourself. For yourself. Which means I would hope everybody would start doing that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really about branding your, you. You. You, you. are brand. Yep. That's definitely true. So how do you feel, jumping into club music, right? Mm -hmm. You have all these other states now. Jersey, well, been doing, Philly. Yeah, Kappa, how do you feel about it? Like, their spin. 
I thought it was crazy how they be playing EA EA like thicker than Taylor Swift. Why y'all want to claim okay. that as y'all? Okay. Just because y'all sped it up. <laughs> That's true. But we kind of went reverse. And like I said, at one time, club music ran Baltimore. If you say something about a local rapper, they was man, get the fuck man, right. get get no nah, no. Nah. So now it's reverse. The locals really run. Baltimore, local rappers are the shit down here. Yeah. And club music died. That's true. Yeah, club music died. Died, died. Died, died. Then, then, then the homosexuals took it over and then it really kind of went that way. And it died. Oh, we got a whole thing on Netflix about it. Yep. So then the, the local rappers are heroes here, which I love. Because I remember when they was like, man, anything but these niggas. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can put on anything but these niggas, but it changed. But it's slowly turning back. What the club? Yes. Yeah, well, you know that Jersey Club, Philly Club is these kids love it now. They do, they, and they be on TikTok. Yeah, all everywhere. don't you can't do a DJ set without putting some club in it now again. So you ain't talking about here though. No here, no, here, not right here. Jersey. No here. These kids love that here. But I, I know, know I do club. know Yo. that they do do. Um, Downtown, right there where it used to be the fountain thing. It ain't even the there park. no more. Oh, and they so. do the dancing yeah. right there on but yeah, Sundays. These, not even millennials, what's that? Gen Club X? Music. Yeah, what's Gen, that? Gen Z. Z. Well, Gen X, Gen Z, whatever. Gen the Z? Kid, whatever the kid kids are. about the kids. Yeah, the kid kids. Yeah, they, they like the club again. Now, hopefully we can have a happy marriage this time where they don't completely start dissing the local rappers yeah. here <laughs> and go all club again like we had it back. But, nah, you, you can't get away from not playing some club right now. Even though it's a Jersey club song talking about EA, EA <laughs> and some Baltimore shit. But shout out to Crazy because Crazy's from Baltimore and he the one that made Shake That, shake that Shit, the, the, the new shit that's hot on TikTok. He from here. I've been so, practicing. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's, they're back to dancing again finally. So it's, it's like you said, everything, everything revolves. So. so who your favorite local rapper? If you could say so without... Oh, NASG Chaz is my favorite rapper. I, I have no problem saying that. He's okay. my favorite. Um, I like Tato. I like um, Blue Benjamin, the, the whole crew, Sleepy and them. Um, OTR Chaz, Roddy, everybody. I like them all. Because it, it was so, I've been in it engulfed in the local scene for so long to see them still doing it and taking it serious. I, I really, like, love them all. <laughs> but NASG Chaz is my favorite hand down. <laughs> wow, can he spit? Yes. Okay. Oh, and of course, YG Tech is probably, like, right there. <laughs> Who's your favorite? Money J, man. Money J is super hot. Who's yours? I don't have a favorite. I just like everybody. Yeah, you like Like everybody. a song. I don't have a favorite. Like, I'm not gonna That's say she don't my listen rap. to rap. I do listen to rap. What do you listen to? I probably Maybe. like old rap though. That's me. Name somebody. That's really old. Yeah, because old is I, probably like perspective. That's not I'm even still, old. I'm still a big fan of three six and stuff like that. Okay, all right. That's my all right. Thing. So you sipping on scissor turned up and all I that. I wish I was. Uh oh. Do you really? Yeah. Kids, stay away from the circuit. <laughs> It's and addictive. Because it brings me back, like if I listen to the old stuff, it brings me back to different stages where mm -hmm. I was in my life and what I was doing. So you can know so what she was doing. Drunk, so you know lean. what she was doing like, back then. I wasn't drinking lean, but... I you was leaning. You was leaning. <laughs> getting it in. I was high. Stopping and popping, but the music was good back then. Yeah, so. and I just, that's me. Like I'll listen to a song. My kids keep me up to date with it mm -hmm. and certain stuff. But other than that, like I'm not just going to say, hey, I want to go do it. If I hear it, somebody send it to me, I'll listen to it. Like, oh, you from Baltimore? That's cool. I'll show support, but I don't have a favorite. I can't just say, this is my favorite rapper. I don't have it. They're pretty good now. They are. Yeah, they better. So as mm -hmm. far as like parties concerned, mm -hmm. what was some of your favorite parties that you love to DJ and what was the worst the worst that you didn't like to get or to clubs. do but you got paid? I liked all the strip clubs that I did. Why? Colossal's 900. Oh, yes. That's why? <laughs> Hell yeah. So the only reason why you like doing the strip clubs is because it was titty and ass everywhere. Yes. Okay. That's Definitely. being real. Okay. Definitely. And you getting money? Then I, um, Hit a stint where I was doing my rides with Frank Ski. I like that because I was able to close. You know, closing is like you get the mix last, which is like everybody's waiting for you. Mm -hmm. So I got the mix last at Mariah's. Um, I used to travel the Eastern Shore a lot with Reggie Reg, and we were superstars in the Eastern Shore. They had black people. What? It's black people. You from and me, yes. Okay. Oh man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Didn't nobody show us on the East? No, Eastern Shore used to be the shit, and they got the Q there. So they used to like treat us like superstars. Them niggas? Yeah, you, you and me, yes. Eastern Shore and all. I know you did not. Yeah, I was just, what, what's that, fraternity? <laughs> the Qs do not do that. They not Qs? That's what you're talking about, right? I said 92 Q. They oh, I said the Qs. Qs. No, they listened to 92 Q there. So they, they knew who we were. I thought they said they had the Qs. Put it this way, when we would go there, they would have us as the backdrops. Oh. Mm. They really liked us like that. Like, yeah, we were superstars. So those were good days. Teamsters uh, Union Hall used to have big ass parties. I used to kill them. Um, but partying, me as a like a partier, nothing's better than Odell's. Odell's is the best. I never made it there, sorry. Yeah, that is probably closed down way before. Odell's, yeah. Odell's was the there. best club <laughs> ever in Baltimore. We had our 33. The best club. The, the best. We'll shake and bake was hot too. Shake and bake on Saturdays. But Odell's, because you knew if you belonged. <laughs> That's, that was their motto. You know if you belong. Mm -hmm. Odell's was the shit. Odell, Shake and Bake. I'm gonna go with Paradox. See, that's later on in life. Oh, See, right. I was I was yeah, out yeah. kind of out the game by the docks. Well, you should have came back. You got the Hammer Jacks docks. I'm I old by them. You should have came back in. The bro. tunnel. Yeah, the tunnel. I was there. I had over that dock. I, I, I'm a, I'm over a the complete dock. adult I said a basketball gold in there. Listen. The tunnel. You could play basketball. I didn't belong bring your own in drink. there. Let's just make that clear. That place was, was no longer. Um, and I hung with older people. I had fun. What was I the um, Swift did? Um, Sound like you were doing underage sex. Sure. No, not yes. yet. A couple years more than that. Oh I did. damn! Like I was real like. We might need an interview room, but <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> but yeah, old house was the shit. What was that at? North Avenue. Really? Yeah. Okay. And so what days you used to do in Everything. Oh, so you did everything. Two in the pink, one in the stink. You could do oh, no! <laughs> it goes like, like your dirties off. Like, that was the shit. Shake and bake on Saturday night was the shit. They had no lights. It was pitch black. <laughs> so you don't even know who you was dancing with. With niggas. They, oh, you knew it was some titties. <laughs> And then you touch some titties and some ass. <laughs> like, yeah. Two in the pink, one in the stink, boy. You used to get it in back then. Yeah, those were the good old days. <laughs> the good old days. Yes. So you are a dance. You would say you a dancer. No, not at all. <laughs> I had a mean two-step. <laughs> that was about it. So what song would get you, you know what? You know what? I'm just about to get up. I'm about to show y'all my two-step. What song? Yo, like? yo, Trev was the shit back then. Doo Doo Brown, Frank Ski was the shit back then. Yeah, man. Hard <laughs> <laughs> two step. When, when you walked out of the club, like some other clubs, Fox's Den and other places like that, you walked out, you was drenched, and you knew you had. They had the drinks called the um the motherfuckers. motherfuckers. Oh, that's yep. right. Blue ah. motorcycles, like. Ooh. Partying was just different back then. You can drag a drunk bitch out, but get to man. <laughs> <laughs> you know we don't edit nothing. Man. Oh, all right. <laughs> somebody those might be listening. Yeah, those <laughs> somebody <laughs> might be listening. Those yeah. were the days. Yes, those, those were the good old days. So have you ever took anyone on as far as like an apprentice, teach them any like the game or just the roles of bending with the locals or like Everybody. getting respect? Everybody. Everybody I come across. That kind of comes with the legend thing. You, okay. you, you saw at the awards, everybody that mm -hmm. pretty much came on the stage said, I, I touched them, not touched them, but. <laughs> 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 not touched physically. You inspired but them. I inspired them in yeah. some kind of way or another because it's, it's an open book. I never thought I was too big because I was on the radio and letting. Nah, that shit don't mean shit. I saw you came in there. I think you had my Tom and Jerry uh, sweater. That was Iceberg. Yeah, Iceberg. Whole Iceberg thing you got up on the that stage. That was Iceberg. Boy, How did it feel when you got that award? I don't even be thinking that I'd be deserving that shit. Like, I'm Why? Because I'd be like regular. Like, you don't know how regular I am. I just stopped smoking tons of weed. <laughs> like, tons of weed. Um, Because I'm in my Kathy Hughes mode. I ain't done forever, but okay. Okay. Just, right, yeah. it's time to folk, you know, it's the time and place for everything. So, I, you know, but no, look at me. I've I been stopped drinking because I used to go hard, like way too hard. But back to why you don't feel like you deserve uh these flowers, these these accolades, you put in all this work. Your name is known by like, yeah, but you touch so many people, not just in Baltimore, but in other places as well. So why? I don't know. I guess you kind of gotta be in my shoes. You know what I mean? Like it ain't even nothing. I'm regular. I'm right away. Used to stand on the strip with jugs in my ass. 
Pretty much. 30, black tops. Yeah, awesome. 35 okay. super skins. So it's like, <laughs> so like, like I'm, yeah, I'm that. So like to be talking some old like, uh, uh, nah, regular. Like about as regular as you going to get. You don't get that a lot of these niggas change. Yeah, yeah like. Especially like, like wood, I got to see that from being on the radio. But niggas, you even know. Yeah, like, nigga, you, you ain't even crib together. Like yeah, you yeah. ain't even that big. Yeah, like you acting like you. I go a superstar. Niggas be Hollywood. Yeah, that does never was me. Cause I'm really a county boy, so we already kind of been Hollywood. Like we, <laughs> I'm different. I'm from Canfield. Thought was better. Yeah. I'm from Canfield, so. We already been this shit. So like the older I get, the more like humble I become. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So you got a bed, you had your award. Mm -hmm. What was that feeling that came through? He just said he ain't care. No, okay. he didn't say that. He I, said he didn't. I, you know what I really wanted to do? I was thinking at the time it would have been fucked up, but I kind of wanted to give it to somebody else. You know what I mean? Like I don't deserve this. Give it to you know somebody else. Well, you know you deserve it, but yeah. you probably wanted to put on. Somebody, somebody else that you know doing their thing. Yeah, the you, don't you, mean you know what it really a lot to you. You know what it really it matters to some people, right? Like that really be like there. I got this, so it, it it makes me something or somebody. And I ain't that person, so like right. somebody that really wants it. As though would have made somebody else day the way. Yeah, though. like they really like. I've been waiting all my life to get the like. First of all, that shit don't mean shit. Like, if you're not really touching hands, shaking babies, kiss, you know, like, that's right. where it really matters. Even though, I ain't gonna front, to have a hometown award, would be, fuck a Grammy, fuck white ac accolades and all that. To really get something from home really do matter. That means you rocking around with, especially as funny acting as home be. So, it do matter, but, like, we here for so much bigger than that. You know what I mean? Like, we not here to be... Uh, look at me and uh, <laughs> shit. Like, nah, like you gotta help some people, change some people's lives. That's where it really matters at. So the awards is like kind of a part of like some ego, me, me, me shit. And I'm the opposite of that. That's why I didn't. It, I'm, I'm appreciative of it. Right. But yeah, somebody that really kind of, it makes their day, I wish they would have got it. Because there was a whole bunch of people that went home salty. You know what That's I mean? Right. So you, you ever got like pressed to play a song? Oh yeah. How how that how that work out? I know they put a DJ Clue in a trunk or something like that. Before. Oh no, that shit won't happen around here. <laughs> but um, <laughs> allegedly. But most of the time I ain't really get pressed because I was playing it. And the only people that was really complaining about getting their shit played would be local rappers and I was already Well that's what I was it. talking about. And I was already playing it. So now I ain't really had that problem. Especially if you know how to mix it. If you know how to put it together, you're not gonna clear the dance floor. Okay. Most DJs, I ain't gonna put this on because it's gonna clear the dance floor. They don't want, if you play it right, if you're good about your craft, That's you know how to blend, get that shit in right, niggas ain't gonna miss a beat. So nine. So you think you can blend anything with anything? Yeah, I'll make it work. Oh, oh, shit. Even, even if you gotta use your mouth as a DJ piece. Yo, this shit right here, the new rock, this shit, when you gotta do, uh, <laughs> drop that in. Let that bang for a little bit, then play a hip right after it. Like, it ain't always got to, you know, it's a way. <laughs> it's always a way. I love the supreme confidence. Gotta have it. Already, you definitely gotta have it. Because he was like, he's like, oh, that's 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 <laughs> Hey, hey, already. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he don't believe in that. Now, now you want to believe in it. No, I don't. It matters. <laughs> <laughs> it matters. So what are some um, jewels or tips that you would drop for anybody that's watching it that wants to get into the business or really second guessing what their DJ skills are? What would you want to say to them? First of all, you got to like what you're doing. That is most important. Not for the money, not for the bitches, not for the ass or whatever, the accolades, the likes. You just got to love to do whatever it is you do. Ain't that liking what you're doing though? Because that comes with what I'm doing and I like that. Not, this not, not, what I'm doing. not necessarily because a lot of times, if what happens if you don't get the ass and the bitches and the IG likes and the, and the, and the, and the love? That means you're not doing your job right because all no, that shit come with it. Well, a lot of that, no, it take time. Nigga, unless you got one eye and one arm, no. that shit come with it, bro. Not necessarily. Sometimes it takes some time. It takes some time. And people don't got that time, that means you ain't really like that shit. 
Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it. I, I like, see it come a time, but once you got the crap, you get the likes and but all. But it takes time to get the crap. You ain't gonna just get in the game and get a control and be like, I'm the best DJ in the world. It takes time to practice. It takes time fucking up. It takes time like it the the learning. Learn. But today, niggas just making playlists. Yeah, but see that that's you that, just said this early. Yeah, but the, but see that comes with people dropping it the next month and doing clothes or dropping it and becoming content creators, picking up a. You ain't gonna never win in life doing that shit. Trust me. You gotta love like without the money, without the bitches, without anything. I still love the music. You'll get far, guaranteed. If you like picking up that camera or doing videos, even though nobody paying you, nobody liking your shit, but you just love the craft. You'll get far 100% of the time. And anything. Mm-hmm. You can't just be sitting here doing a podcast because you think you're going to get some pussy out the deal. Yeah. You're going to have to listen to other podcasts. Mm-hmm. But see, that's one person that really like their craft. Like, I want to see what the Breakfast Club is doing. I want to see who, who my competition is. I want to learn the game. I want to, uh, 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 uh. I guarantee you'll go far. But if you just yeah. like, man, this shit ain't panning out. We ain't getting the likes. We like, I'm going to get ready to start my clothing line. That, that's that, like this thing and people in their clothing line with you. <laughs> I mean, everybody got one. Everybody got a clothing line. I think that's the new like. All right, I want to do something else. All right, I got a clothing line. Or I'm, now I got a, I got my iPhone. I'm a content creator. But then when that shit die down, or you ain't getting the attention you want, you on to something else. Then you on to something else. You gotta stick with whatever you like to do, whatever that is. If you garden, I don't give a shit what it is. Stick to it forever, and you'll get on. 100% of the time, you'll get exactly what you need, that success you're looking for, the millions, all that. Because it's going to be some ups and downs, God's going to give you tests to see how bad you want it. And most people, when they get that first little hiccup, oh, I'm, I make pocketbooks now. you be like, yo, then you're going to have to st- stick with whatever you like to do, stay with it, and you'll get on. I can guarantee but you that. if you're a woman, you can just get a BBL. Even that's falling apart because now the, the BBL ain't even where it used to be because now they're trying to get back to the natural look. I seen that because they had this chick with a, with a nice body and they laughing at the bitches with the BBL because y'all look they like mean, clowns now. Now they don't care. Who laughing? The women? Because the niggas ain't caring. Niggas never cared in the first place. All right, that's what they getting them for. They ain't getting them for the bitches. No, they getting them for they the bitches. They getting them for the females. They, they getting, getting them for the, the females. females. They getting them for the for, niggas so they can get the motherfucking bag, ride the car, get the whip, get the vacations. And most of them guys be gay. If you, hey, they, I'm from the earth. I don't give a fuck what your fingernails look like, if your toes is done, what kind of hair you got. Man, that's some woman shit. <laughs> niggas gonna beat some pussy. That's why you see all these fat bitches with babies. <laughs> That's why you see these raggedy looking bitches with all the babies, cause niggas don't care about all that superficial shit. That be some girls that wanna That's look at the nail. Girl. So you telling me if a bitch's nails ain't done, you ain't giving her no holler? I ain't saying I ain't giving no holler, but you can't look like that every day. Man. Like you gotta, you gotta get your shit together. Pussy still get wet. I'm out there early. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm out there early. If your no. toes ain't done, oh, you, I hope you got all your toes. But if not, uh, <laughs> fuck your toes. Uh, gut and butt GBs, nigga. What are you talking about? Gut and butt, nigga. That's how I like. Like what? All that perfect six, man. That's a whole another generation type shit. They, man, pussies still get wet. <laughs> And, and usually those the ones that cook for you and fix you the good ass meal be the ones with the gut and the butt and the motherfucking cellulite and all that. I got man, if you ass. care, if you care how her nails look and her toes done and give. Oh, I ain't messing with her cause her hair. Man, I don't care if the bitch bald. <laughs> it's a difference between messing with a chick and. I ain't fuck. saying dirty. I ain't saying no, dirty I'm saying like hygiene wise. Messing and fucking, fuck. you ain't you ain't messing with that chick. You might be robbing. Like what you mean? Like that? I mean, you bust I bust down some busted ones. I mean, I ain't really trying to sport her or nothing. But if you want to go I'm over saying. there and get a meal and some butt, that's what life is about. I thought. I, I, I mean, you crazy. don't want to sport her to the to, the, to you, the masses and all no, that. And on, so look at my girl and all that. But she shit. can't get the meal if she busted. You only she, get the See, see, cool. see, that's what I don't like about y'all, man. Y'all keep trying to act like the pussy got right. more worth than the dick. But you getting this dick? Be grateful. You busted. What you mean? I mean. <laughs> Damn, you felt that way. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Uh, you want to get something on your chest? Like, no, I, I just don't like the way you come across with it, you know, because it is what it is. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm just saying, nails, I think girls look good for girls. When they go to the store, they're not saying, oh, this guy's going to like the way this shit looks, because guys don't really give a shit. 
We're Neanderthals. We we monkeys. Like, like I just want to beat the guts. Like, I don't care if you got a gut and butt. Like, I don't care about no BBI. That's just now. Not, it's, that's where the word choosing come from. If you see this bitch with everything done up next to the busted bitch you talking about, you're going to choose that one, right? Well, usually the, a lot. Well, usually now the super fine bitch that's done up been ran through. Well, you trying to fuck anyway. Why you care? They you just say you hope the bitch got toes. They be ran through. They be superficial. You got to pay a whole bunch of money for them. They no, a whole bunch you of do, bro. Yeah, I do. That's why I get me a motherfucking number. <laughs> I don't go for the tens. I'll get me a couple nickels. I have a whole bunch of nickels and pennies, nigga. And they'll cook for me, treat me like I'm Jesus Christ, walking across the floating across the earth, all that. See, the thing you Now, you get them pretty bitches. Okay. They all superficial. A you lot of these shot. pretty superficial bitches, mm -hmm. they got nickel self-esteem. Once you dig into it. But we ain't going to go into that. You have a point about that. Oh, I know I got a point. I done been there. I'm saying that. <laughs> what you talking about? Huh. When you take them pretty dimes and deal with their mental I, issues. No, the ones you talk about, I take them drunk at 3 in the morning. But other than that, I ain't got time. Nickels and pennies, boy. You gotta be the last one on my line. If walk you around the house, carry you and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Different strokes for different folks. We're well, all trying to get to the strokes, though, at the end of the day. That's what it's all about, huh? I, I, I don't, I don't yeah. fuck women, so I wouldn't I don't, I don't have a dick. So I have no comment. Yeah, testosterone is a wild thing. Yeah, that's sure. your <laughs> <laughs> I'm just amazed. It make you do all kinds of wild shit. Ooh, okay. So nickels and pennies, dimes and crazies. Okay, all right. There we go. There we go with it. All right. That's where we go with it. So what is um what are you currently working on right now? Do you Hooligan care to share with us? Hooligan Express Radio. Okay. Um, download the app. Yep, download the app. It's free. Any app store. But um I took all the knowledge that I learned from 20 plus years in radio and took it to myself. <clears throat> I'm doing it for myself. I got off the Jews. That makes sense. <laughs> and eventually, <laughs> yeah, eventually, that's as a human, that's kind of what you want to do. You don't want to, well, just me. But the older you get, you don't want to keep having to have a boss and have to keep work. That's some dang dash coming out. Like, you don't want to have to always be, can I have a day off? Master, can I, you know, like, eventually you want to be your own. But that take time. You got to master your craft first. And then you jump out, do your own thing. You're going to have some ups and downs. We had a fire. That's my partner, Earl. he been with me forever. Um, we had a fire, but that's just a little hiccup. So we just continuing on. The station's back up. It was an accident or it was a hater? No, it was an accident. Okay. It was an accident. I haven't really came across any haters in Baltimore since I've been here. Really? Nope. Never got your tie slashed? Nope. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Always <laughs> like crazy. Always something. been kind of like a servant to the people. Like it's always been like, how can I help you? So not one crazy bitch bust the window. Now, my, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, nope. we're getting right back on to nope. what you're currently working on. So yep, you said the app, so they downloaded. So if they go to the app, what will they experience? Like 24 hours of radio. Every 24 hours? 24 hours. The third, every third song is a local song. We got, um, we mix in the morning, because I, like, in the morning shows from 6 to 10, in that time slot, it's a lot of mouth talking. But when you're getting up in the morning, you just want to get some music to get you going. So we mix in the morning. And our promo is, while y'all running y'all mouth, we mixing. So we mix all morning. Mm -hmm. And then after 10, then when 10 o'clock hits, we got Joe and Yoko. And they come on, do 10 to 2. 2 to 6, we working on. And then 6 to 10, I come on. 10 to 2, little black. So, and then we all got, to, like I said, 24 hours of mixing and rotation. We got all the hits because I still... And with my label people, all the label people I've been with for 20-something years, I still get all the new music. So I still get all the Megan's and Lil Baby, so I get all that shit first. So I'm playing all the new shit. And I'm not biased. So I'm not, you're not going to hear them same five songs that the radio are playing. Yeah, nigga hate the radio for that, yo. We jam, and every third song is local. Local hits. So, and we playing some Jersey Club, too, so you should listen. Yo, Jersey is the shit now. They're club music. I, I like the drill music, New York drill. Yep, New York Drew. We playing a couple, um, I forgot your name. Oh, B Love? No, though. No. Oh, we playing B Love. Love. What's the C C C C C K? C K, I think his name oh, is. No. That's New York Drew. From Brooklyn, I wanna say. We playing him. So we playing all like like all the shit that I used to be in. Like, why they not playing this? Why they not playing that? But like I said, for the love of the game, I'm checking billboard charts. I'm checking 
other radio stations and numbers every day. I'm checking lists. I'm checking rap caviar. I'm just going through. Man, you addicted to this shit. Yeah, that, he loves what he did. That's he the only. Know? That's the only way you're gonna. That's the only way you're gonna make it. You gotta like really get into your craft and love that shit. I mean, I could just throw any old thing on, but no, I'm checking to see what the hot local shit is. I'm checking to see who doing numbers. Who did, 24 hours a day, you guys, I'm always. So you got like a, a special board because your connections, where you can look at that shit or you can just Google it? I be doing everything. Oh, special okay. board, Google, the labels are sending me shit. Like, it's a whole conglomerate of shit that I'm just going through and keeping us fresh. I got, I got one more question. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you believe in like canceling artists? Like it's something they could do to whiz though I'm not playing any music or you could separate the art? I don't really play too much Lil Nas X. Oh, for real? Yeah. Because and he, it's, and it's a hit. His life choices? Yeah. Okay. What about R. Kelly? He too old. Our demo's 13 to 30. And no nobody 30 give a fuck about R. Kelly. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. So, all of that's what you're currently doing, that's what they can get from the app. Mm -hmm. So where do you see Hulu can express in five years? All over the world. Because what I do is take the Baltimore local out and replace it with African local. Replace it with Memphis local. Mm -hmm. Replace Because hoods all around the world are getting whored because of this radio format playing these same five biased hits. That's a fact. So it's hood artists all over the world that needs some shine. So that will be my projection for five years plus i want you to be able to hit the live button and watch everything we're doing because i'm programming the music myself and most of 99 percent of the shit i program are videos so you'll see video 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 live shot to us in the studio back to video 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 live shot to us in the club so them titties and ass you'll be able to see them live or listen to them so look at him where he signed it <laughs> <laughs> so you sit at home and be like you know what i don't feel like going out tonight let me see what's going on in the uh -huh. club I could hear it and see it live, so that's where we're going. That's cool. That's what I'm talking about right there. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Is there anything that you feel like you need to get off your chest that we haven't already asked you? Like, this is your moment where you can just go in and just like, boom, something you want to ask us is more than welcome to just go ahead and do that. We always want to give somebody the opportunity. Mm, not really. My problem right now is has nothing to do with y'all. I'm just trying to get us on us. Why are we still sucking Louis Vuitton's dick, Gucci's dick, Chanel, Balenciaga, all that goofy ass white people shit that they keep, we just keep paying for their legacy. We just keep extending their legacy, their legacy after their legacy. And they don't make that shit for white people. White people dress like bums. They make that shit for niggas. That's why they put $5,000 on a shirt because they know niggas gonna buy that dumb shit and keep their kids and their kids, 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 kids like, straight forever and we just keep falling into that dumb ass shit and that's not for white white people don't wear that shit they make that raggedy ass shit for niggas because they know niggas don't have no self-esteem when it comes to us like i've been stopped rocking all that home like that that that, that phone like i was wearing crombie a lot i actually like the material mm -hmm. but why wow, when it's a like i said it's a million local artists the local people that got clothing lines well, so I, that would be the pushback to where though some people would say their material and their fabrics and shit is not as good. That's so, a lie, because all that shit coming from China. We export everything. America don't make shit no more. We export everything from China. That's why they can hold up the ports. Okay. Just give me the pushback what people want to say. Like, yeah. No, the, the real pushback is like, you can't afford it. They, the shit raggedy, and they put the price up just for niggas. <laughs> That sh you can't tell me some of it, man. They take a shit on a pair of shoes and put a $30,000 tag on it. Niggas be riding like, I'm talking about like these basketball players, these artists, like these sign up, like, like, just goofy to me. Like, y'all got like self esteem problems. And it could be the same product that a black person are making. And nah, y'all give me a discount on it, but you'll pay, mm -hmm. but you'll pay the yeah, high, but you'll pay the high to a white man that really be, he hate niggas, first of all. They let you know, like, we don't even like y'all. You come to our store, we treat y'all like shit. We don't even like y'all. And y'all still be, yes, I'm master. How much I gotta pay for <laughs> five thousand dollars for a raggedy t-shirt? You get yeah, cause it make me feel like I'm like that shit. But I guess the money make people feel a certain type of way. Cause when Shaq came out with the Shaqs and Stephon Marbury came out with the Marbury's, affordable shoes, ain't nobody wanna win, or you got on cheap shoes. So 
the shit got to be a certain price for people to feel a certain way about themselves. I don't know but, why. Let me tell but, you, if this shirt right here was $3,000, they would say who made it. They would. So it ain't even really about that. It's about we got a self-esteem problem when it comes to us. That's a black brand. And you could be like, yo, this shit, $5,000. And niggas be like, I'm not paying for that shit. But if that shit had an LV, some honky shit on there, they be like, let me see if I can take a loan out or save up for that shit. So it ain't really about that. Makes sense. That is true. Dumb ain't slick. Slick ain't dumb. Let <laughs> me scale my shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And on that note, it's well, another episode. Say thank you. Oh, I got to thank you for like coming. Hey, you like, not even going to do it. Thank you for looking at me. Wrap it up. Next nigga, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me wrap it up. All right, man. But <laughs> well, we definitely appreciate you for yes. coming. Thank you, your man and your word. Say you yes. won't come. Kane, we know you're busy. It's on time. What's going on? on? We what? But <laughs> definitely appreciate you. No problem. On that note, it's been another episode of Anything Goes. Podcast.